Hello Aries viewers, just bear with my camera, it takes a minute to adjust. I'm going to get right into it, so whatever the cards want to say, it could be about love, it could be about money, um, often, most of the time it's about love, but we'll see, we'll see what comes out for you guys. As always, if you'd like a private reading, just email me, my email is right below in the description box below this video. That email is dragonenchantress at aol.com, so you can just copy and paste it. Any donations are appreciated. My donation links are also below. Yeah, as I said, just bear with my camera for a minute. It will take a minute to adjust as I put the cards out. So if someone owes you an apology and they're being stubborn, hmm... Apology, regret, overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotage, pause, reflection, and rest. Choosing their words wisely, planning their approach, make your move, green light, trapped, blocked, tied up, isolation, loneliness, emptiness, new love, faded encounter. Passion, romance. Ooh. What else? Manipulation and deception. Sex and seduction. Vulnerability and receptivity. We have nostalgia and longing. To me, this is someone who knows that they owe you an apology, but they've been sitting on this apology probably for a while. So we've got apology regret. It looks like they're finally bringing this apology in. But for some, I feel like this apology is just going to be closure for you. You know, I think a lot of you were waiting on this apology. You were waiting on this clear, open, honest communication for a long time. You were, 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 you were waiting for this person to stop playing games. And so I think, you know, in the past, I feel like you would have just accepted this apology and you guys could have moved forward together. But I feel like this person's procrastinated and held on to their pride for so long that, um, and this person could be spying on you too, that when this apology does come in, I feel like you're just you know, a lot of you are probably just going to take it as closure. You're probably over it by this point. A lot of you are probably just, you're, you're not going to trust it. It's like someone was overthinking and overanalyzing and sabotaging themselves. They let their fear and their pride get the best of them. It's like they, they, this is, this is a perfectionist as well. This is someone that just overthinks and overanalyzes everything has to kind of have some control issues here. Like they just have to have everything their way. Everything just has to be perfect. And so they, they needed to communicate with you early on. They needed to say what needed to be said early on. Some of them just could not find, not making excuses for them, but just telling you the energy I'm channeling here. Some of them just could not find the right words. It's like they just it's like they'd write these letters out to you and they delete them. Like they might mess try to message you on Facebook or text or like Instagram or some kind of social media um, or even call you for some. I feel like most of them, like I see typings. I think it's like, you know, probably social media for a lot of them. But it's, it almost feels like they would write these things out and then they'd be like, no, that sounds stupid or that sounds needy or they'd you know, go the opposite way and they'd be too short and they'd be like, no, that doesn't sound genuine enough. That doesn't sound um, considerate enough. It's like they just they couldn't find that balance between not coming on too strong, but also like acknowledging, you know, their mistakes and acknowledging that they've been distant for a while and apologizing. You know, some of them might have been kind of confused about your emotions so they didn't want to just send you a casual, hey, what's up? But they don't, they also don't want to, you know, write this, you know, two page, <laughs> write you this book about how, you know, they're sorry they've been busy and this has been going on and they're sorry they did this or that or, you know, just pouring their feelings out. 
Um, I think some of them did, like, for, like, some of them do drink, not all of them, but some of them do, and some of them, like, would, would go to drunk text you, and they try to stop themselves, like, they, they would say something stupid, like, it, it's like, I just, this person was, like, holding back their emotions for a long time, it's like, they knew that they needed to communicate with you, but it just feels like they just never did, like, they just, they could never find the right words, they could never figure out what to say. And then they got distracted by life, by everything going on with them, and they got caught up. For someone, they even caught up in a third party for someone here. But, um, yeah, it's like they just took too long to choose their words, to plan their approach. And so I feel like some of them are finally coming through to, to make that move, to send that apology, to say something. Even if the words aren't perfect, they just, you know, some of them are trying to come through here to just say something finally. You know, we have make your move, green light. But I really feel like some of you are just going to take this opportunity because it's like you were like trapped by this. You know, you felt like this was like a block in your life because even if you moved on from it, like even if like I feel like a lot of you have gotten to that point where you're just like, you know what, I would have given this person a chance, you know, a few months or so ago, but like, you know, after everything, no, I don't think I think they've just taken too long. I don't want to deal with this again. I don't want to go through this anymore. Um, some of you are just going to take this apology and you're just going to run with it because it's like you're, you're taking the blindfold off. And I feel like this was blocking you for a long time because there was just never, I feel like this person probably like ghosted you or they just got really distant and busy and distracted. It just feels like this person kind of left a lot of things unsaid. So there wasn't really any closure with this person. It's like you felt like you just didn't have answers. Like you never knew what they felt, what they wanted. Um, and a lot of that is just this person being a perfectionist. It's like they want to control everything. They want to control... Oops, sorry about that. They want to control how the conversation goes with you is kind of what I'm getting to. Like they just... It feels like this is the type of person that just plans out what they're going to say. Like, they can't just let conversation flow naturally. Like, they want to be able to read people. They want to be on top. They want to be a few steps ahead of everybody. And so it feels like this person just kind of screwed themselves over by, by doing that, by trying to control everything instead of just letting it flow naturally. And, yeah, I think a lot of you, when you get this apology... It's going to give you answers and it's going to give you closure. You're going to be like, well, I would have accepted that. Pot. Like, that's that's a valid reason. I understand why you why we, we weren't together. I understand why you got busy, you know, like I'm hearing your kid was sick. Maybe that's for someone specific. Maybe they had like a maybe they have a kid and their kid had like a like an illness or something that they had to take care of. Like they might have had something really intense going on in their life and they didn't want to. Maybe it was like a newer relationship with you and they didn't want to burden you with all that and be like, oh, yeah, my kid has like cancer. I, you know, I can't date you right now. Like they just felt like it was just too much, you know, to say that. So they didn't know what to say to you. That's just for someone specific here. But um, but anyway, yeah, it just feels like like you might just. Some of you will give this another chance, but I feel like a lot of you are just going to free yourselves. It's like you've been trapped. You've been because you kind of haven't had the answers, even though you're moving on from it. You still always kind of wonder, like, well, like, what did I do wrong? Like, what the hell happened? I thought we were, we were all hot and heavy. And then all of a sudden you got distant or you were busy all the time. Like, is it me? Like, do I smell bad? Like, like, what's what's up? Like, do you want me? Do you not want me? And so I think it's going to give you these answers. Um I think a lot of you are just going to free yourselves, though, and you're going to go towards this new love instead. You're going to get out of this period of isolation and loneliness, and you think you're going to you're going to have this cleared up, and you're just going to want to go towards new love and passion and romance instead. I think you've got someone new coming in. You've got manipulation, uh, deception, sex, seduction, vulnerability, receptivity. I feel like some of them are going to really try to seduce you, like almost like deceive you. Like they're going to come back in. they're nostalgic they want to be vulnerable with you here and some of them are faking that vulnerability it's like they're going to try to seduce you by being in that vulnerable energy i hope that makes sense Let's 
clarify though. Loyalty, stability, vows, cold, guarded, distrusting, betrayal, jealousy, conflict, new perspective. Hmm. Yeah, some of them are going to come back in. Some of them are going to make excuses for why they ghosted you. And I feel like you're going to be talking to someone else, though, at that point. Because it feels like they're going to come in, like, making these promises to you, you know, promising. Maybe they cheated, too, for some. I feel like they're going to be, you know, making these promises to be loyal to you. But I feel like you're going to be kind of guarded. You're not going to trust it this time around. Either because they betrayed you in the past, or I also feel like... You might just be choosing this other person over them, and they might have felt like you were just going to wait for them forever. Like, they might have just kind of ghosted you and gotten busy and just figured, like, like, kept overthinking it, kept trying to figure out the right thing to say to you, but kind of also overestimating your feelings for them and thinking, well, okay, like, I don't have to, I don't have to write this letter tonight, you know, I'm I'm working this weekend or I got a lot going on this weekend. I can write this letter Monday. I can write, you know, just putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and just thinking that they have all this time and that, you know, you'll probably give them a second chance. Like, you know, yeah, they ghosted you, but they had, you know, this going on or that going on. So it's understandable, right? Like, I think they just kind of over, like, overestimated your feelings for them. So I think they're going to have a rude awakening when they come back and they try to, you know, make these promises to you and tell you, oh, hey, like, I don't have as much on my plate right now. Some of them might have been musicians and might have been going on tour for some. Like, they just had a lot going on. Some of them some of them wanted to go out and see what all was out there before they settled down with anybody. Um, there's a few different stories here. But the overall energy that I'm picking up off this is, is that, yeah, it's like they're going to come back around and they're going to be surprised to find that you're kind of distant. You're kind of cold and guarded. You're not as open and sweet as you were before. You're not as invested as you used to be. You know, they just, they straight up just took too long. And some of them are going to get really jealous because they feel like they have dibs on you. They felt like you were going to wait and you're going to be meeting this new person and you're going to be like, oh no, I don't think so. Like I have like a new perspective. I've, I'm ending, I've ended that pattern. Like I don't like men like you anymore or I don't like women like you anymore. Like you're just not even my type anymore. Like it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me anymore. I don't want, I don't want to go back to that. Thanks, but no thanks. You know, listening, understanding, true love and abundance now flows to you naturally and effortlessly as a result of your open mindedness, your faith and your bravery. Tell me about this new person. Cause I know you guys are probably sick of hearing about the old person. <laughs> I watch other psychics on YouTube too. Cause I'm an Aries myself and I watch other psychics on YouTube and I swear like, when the old person pops up, I'm like, why? Just stop coming through my readings. But it's difficult because it's like, it's that energy group. So, you know, even if you're over the person, sometimes it's like you, you, there's still people in the energy group that need to catch up that still are not fully over that person that, you know, it's, it's difficult. It, it gets difficult. But let me see the new person. Let's see what we can find out about the new person. Potential life partner. True love. Ooh stagnation complacency clubs parties and um social life toxicity red flags and motives this person hmm let me get more cards to clarify spying soulmate past life soul connection sadness Confusion and uncertainty. Choose a path. I feel like when you meet this person, like either they or you might be going through something. Like you might be going through a, um, like letting go of someone else, I feel. Because there's like stagnation here. It's like you guys are meeting, I feel, but it's, it's almost like they might be partying a lot or you might be partying a lot. Like there might be like drinking or drugs or something, like some kind of addiction that, that one of you has. That you guys, like, like someone's just in the kind of a dark place right now. Like, I feel like there is potential life partner energy here, though. But it's just, I feel like you guys are going to meet at, like, a really interesting time in your life. Clarify these, clarify this energy more. Pride and stubbornness, willpower, strength and confidence, publicity, social media, truth and clarity, chaser, chasey, power struggle, fear of commitment, Anger, miscommunication, 
Hidden Truth, Home, Hesitation, and Risk, Reward, Bold Gesture, Choosing Love Over Fear. Hmm. I almost feel like you guys are both going to be really stubborn and you're both leaders. Like you're both very like feisty and opinionated and kind of stubborn. And so when you guys meet, I almost feel like there might be like a little bit of a power struggle. But I feel like this person's going to be treating you well, though. Like this, this is not a toxic person that I'm picking up on. This is a good person. But there could be like miscommunication at first because I feel like you're really not going to be what they're used to and vice versa. So you guys are kind of, it's like going to be kind of like alien to you where you're not going to know what to do with each other. And if you try to play games, they're going to one-up you. And if they try to play games, you're going to one-up them. It's like they've met their match and you've met your match. You know what I mean? It's, a good, it's just, it's going to be a different energy than what you guys are used to is basically what I'm feeling here. And, you know, you guys are going to get past the pride, though. I feel like you're going to have, like, this willpower, strength, and confidence energy come in here. Um, to, you know, put yourself out there, to make it public, to make these emotions, you know, make yourself known, make the feelings known. Could be a little bit of a power struggle. I feel like there could be mis potential miscommunication where you might think that they're afraid of commitment, but they're playing hard to get or you're playing hard to get. They, it, it could also be a warning that they might misunderstand you if you try to play the same games that you played in the past. This hidden truth is going to come out, though. Someone's going to be like a little bit hesitant at first. Like, oh, is this is this true? Is this real? Is this is this solid? But they're going to feel at home with you. They're going to feel safe with you. And so they're going to get past that energy and that confusion um, and they're choosing love over fear. Bold gesture. Yeah, mutual feelings here. Love offer, commitment. Mental instability, waiting, hoping, praying. Beauty, mystery, enchantment. Yeah, beauty, mystery, enchantment. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I feel like they've been waiting for you to come in to the point where it's like they've been like waiting for you and kind of almost been unstable over it. And you have beauty, mystery, enchantment here. But it's almost like when you do come in there, it's going to be like too good to be true. Like they're not going to know what to do with it. There's going to be like the fear of rejection. For others, I feel like they might have been attached to someone else and they're currently getting over that. Like, they're currently releasing that energy. Yeah, manifesting. Some of them are manifesting you. Some of them are witches themselves, and they're actually trying to manifest you and, and find you. End of a pattern or cycle, breakthrough, freedom. Yeah, I feel like when this does come in, it's like they're not going to want to let go of you. Domination, control, adventure, honeymoon, vacation. It's like you're... You're leaving the spiritual energy and you're you're the, making this physical is kind of what I'm feeling here. Yeah, it could be a message coming in as well. But anyway, as I've said, if you want a private reading, just email me. I can go more in depth into this energy. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Donations are appreciated. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching.